Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shireen and welcome back to our initiative, What Up Dentistry. As you all know, we are a team of dentists with healthcare management background and we are here to guide you and make you aware of the various career options in dentistry and healthcare. Today, we have with us Dr. Rachita, an oral medicine and radiology specialist practicing in Kolkata. She completed both her MGS and BGS from the Kur Institute of Dental Sciences, Virajpet. She has been working for more than six years now. She is enthusiastic, passionate, and hardworking towards delivering quality care to her patients. We welcome you, Dr. Rachita, on our platform today, and we are glad to have you. And we are really excited to talk about the scope and opportunities in the field of oral medicine and radiology. We welcome you once again. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Dr. Rachita. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Shireen and Dr. Vipin uh, for giving me this opportunity in What After Dentistry. And I'm really glad to be a part of this interactive session today. Uh, thank you so much. So before you know, we start off with the formal discussion on oral medicine and radiology, we would like to know more about you. How has been your journey so far? What were your achievements, your struggles, if there were any? We would like to know more about, it, about that. Okay. Uh, I finished my BDS in 2010. So, like, I was very clear of doing MD MDS from the day one itself. But I was not very specific about which branch I would want to go in for. Uh, because I was simultaneously practicing and I couldn't dedicate my all my time in MDS entrance preparation. So I was anyway okay with getting any subject because I was very sure that once whichever subject I'll be doing, I am going to give full justice to it. So accordingly, I took up a seat in MDS. That too, it was in a very comfortable. Uh, I was placed in a very comfortable position because I I got a seat in the college where I had done my BDS. So everything was going smoothly. I I dedicated my entire three years to this oral medicine. Because I knew that even if it was oral medicine, you know, a lot of people say that it is non-clinical subject. But to be very frank, all the three years, I have thoroughly enjoyed pursuing MDS in oral medicine and radiology. Then after that, once I completed my course, it was very easily, I was easily placed in the same college itself as a senior lecturer. So by far, I had not seen any struggles. Then after that, a year and a half, Obviously, like any other girl, I got married. So I, I had, the, there, were, there, were, there were only two options. Either I had to continue there itself with my husband back living in Kolkata or I had to leave the job and move to Kolkata. Because in a place like Kolkata, there are no many colleges. But then I was, you know, spending time in Virajpur for nearly 11 years. I seriously thought this is the time to just come out of the comfort zone. And, you know, explore something which, you know, I had not done it from the past 10 years, to be very frank. Okay, so I didn't give a second thought because a lot of people even advised me that Rachita, you are in a place, in a position where most people want to be. Because that's how, that's how everybody sees the subject oral medicine. Like, you know, the minute you finish oral medicine, if you've got a job as a senior lecturer, that's it. Nothing beyond that. But I didn't go, I was ready to take up the challenge. I was ready to go, go to a new city and explore what is there for me over there. I was very open to everything. Then once I went to Kolkata, yeah, I agree. I had to wait and for nearly six months to, to get that job, which I always wanted to. Okay, so I was basically looking for a job where I could do general dentistry as well as do oral medicine uh, and radiology practice. So luckily after six months, I was placed in exactly the same position which I wanted. I started working in a corporate hospital, which is called AMRI Hospital in Kolkata. So they have uh, around five centers where they do dentistry. Uh, four, four is hospital-based practice and one is a medical center practice. So the medical center practice had everything what any oral medicine specialist would want, was always wanting to have. Uh, the, the basically that center has CBCT, laser and everything. So initially I was just taken in as a radiologist. So for the next six months, I was just working like a radiologist. Uh, there was nothing like, you know, oral medicine happening there. 
so then when i started discussing it with about this subject to my the, the bds graduates over there and the other specialty uh, people like the orthodontist the prosthodontist the periodontist the endodontist so they themselves also thought why don't we get a domain oral medicine also to our uh, hospital where a lot of people are as it is coming but they were kind of misguided you know they you know always the patients have this thing in their mind ki anything goes wrong in the mouth other than your teeth dentists do dentists have nothing to do with it so mostly to our hospital the same oral medicine patients used to come but they would end up going to the ent doctors so somehow with the team work we could channelize that set of patients who are going to the ent we kind of channelized to the to our center i know it was not easy so after doing this whole mechanical uh, radiology work for 6 months i finally started putting my hand in oral medicine but luckily it worked yeah. so now it's been like almost 4 years i'm i'm pretty satisfied with the specialist practice what i do and definitely it is happening because we are working as a team because bringing awareness to patients itself is so difficult because patients think ki you know if something happens in the tongue or if something happens in the buccal mucosa the dentist has nothing to do with it because the dentists are only concerned with teeth so somehow we are able to manage the patients and of course because of the word of mouth we finally managed to set up a base who the patients themselves come and ask for a oral medicine specialist i think that's amazing that's a great journey because and what you have really done generally we see like you correctly said you know once you pursue any non clinical field and soon after you get a job as a senior lecturer that's it so it's very difficult to come out from that comfort zone leave everything you know good things behind and then start from all over again i think that's a very courageous step that you have taken and i'm listen until you would not have taken that step i don't think so you would have not been working as a specialist in you know oral medicine and radiology that happened i wouldn't be coming to what of the dentistry platform also if i was not doing that <laughs> no no that's not the case we would have it is mm. called you because we would <laughs> want specialist you know the uh, doctors and dentists to come over and talk about it so i think it has been a great journey and i'm sure everyone who are listening to us they will get motivated and seeing that oral medicine and radiology stream is not just related to academician you can also work as a specialist if not in a hospital you can start your own special you know specialist treatment in your practice as well so you can start doing that and of course once the patient gets to know that you know a dentist will not just treat the teeth but also everything which revolves in the oral cavity the word of mouth marketing always works so yes Absolutely. Uh, that's an amazing journey that you know uh, you have been through so uh, we would like to know like if a student you know gets admission as a uh, mbs in oral medicine radiology what should they expect and why do we say that this is uh, this is not a clinical field so i think oral medicine and radiology is the first point of contact for a patient so let me elaborate this so oral medicine and radiology in india is a combined subject unlike in most of the countries abroad they treat these two subjects separately but we are lucky to be combining it together in india so see when you divide the subject into oral medicine and radiology so radiology i totally agree it is non clinical because we are not seeing patients directly see for example when i go to the center for reports for making the reports i wouldn't have seen the patient it will be just the prescription i see and mostly it is a uh, uh, you know blind reporting i can say but if it has a supporting case history that will that will be well and good but mostly it will be a blind reporting but oral medicine definitely is not non clinical because there are a lot of things we we do treat the patient for you know for example if a patient is lucky enough to get detected in a stage uh where the particular oral lesion is about to go into a cancer that is early cancer detection which makes a lot of difference okay so i don't think so oral medicine as a whole is not non clinical yeah only the radiology part can be considered as non clinical but not the oral medicine part 
so if anybody wants to pursue this subject don't ever be under this notions that oh it is a non clinical subjects we do treat a lot of things and patients are so satisfied the only thing they have to say after the end of the treatment is we didn't know that this specialty existed right this is the one thing what i have i my past 4 years of my clinical practice a pure clinical practice without any academics this is what i heard patients telling me directly we didn't know it existed exactly uh, so other part of my question was that if somebody is pursuing mds in oral medicine or wants to pursue mds in oral medicine and mm-hmm. doctor, what should they expect so as it is as i said uh, don't be under the impression that getting a job as a senior lecturer in a college that itself is the end of the world okay uh, because you you are as dr shireen said you are the ones who are exposed to the patients initially uh when the patients come to the college so you already know what is patient management because you have already reinforced the patient for the treatment it is how you see the patient how you see the patient the patient will be respond responding in other departments so as it is there is full scope to start a dental clinic also where you can start your specialized practice along with general dentistry for example i know especially if you are in a rural i know it's a little difficult in metropolitan cities considering the, the competition you have a uh, specialized practice will not work on the whole you need to you know build in everything but i think in a if you are placed in a rural uh, city or in a two tier uh, a city specialized oral medicine practice will give you more benefits for example i know a few of them who are doing something called as a uh, tobacco cessation in- intervention centers you know and early detection of oral uh, cancer okay so these two things itself you know on the whole you you stand out in these two things only if you are starting your own clinic okay and last but not and one more thing is we even treat patients for orofacial pain these days since we have work from home culture i myself am getting lot of patients with tmd stress related uh, disorders and patient with unknown orofacial pain and all those things i think the knowledge what we oral medicine people have regarding all these things stress related uh, orofacial pain i don't think so anybody else will have uh, and then you can even go into you know you can you know build up a rapport with the people say now whatever i have spoken till now was only a if you are going in for a clinic where you want to start a specialized practice at the same time you can specialist practice as well as general dentistry then coming to the place where i am working okay so it's a medical center where all kind of specialists are working okay so there is a ent specialist there is a neurologist there is a geriatric specialist md geriatric so basically i know it's not easy to be going in front of them and saying ki sir ma'am if there is any patient of this sort you can refer it to us as well okay see because the referral is most important considering the fact that most of the oral lesions which are occurring are all potentially malignant so say i have had experience where the patient was misguided almost for 8 or 9 9, 9 months that lesion was not attended and later on it turned out to be a malignancy so you can you know go and explain what this is what i have done on a ground level i have gone and met these specialists and i have explained that if they come across something like this kindly refer i know it's not easy to start off but it's definitely not impossible then coming to radiology if you you know radiology of course it's the in thing in the urban areas no matter because every dentist no matter what would want a cbct uh, report these days even if it is for a single tooth or for for or the entire scan so it's somewhat you know this opg and the 2d imaging is kind of getting sidelined with so many cbct centers coming up this i'm talking about the big cities so obviously you know uh, for example the center where i work they wanted a full time radiologist okay so i go just to that center but i know a lot of radiologists who are just sitting at home and working so you can even do work from home if you are a mts in oral medicine radiology because they themselves send it through mail and you just have to report and send it back 
rest everything the center takes care of it but the center where i am working they wanted a full time radiologist so that is not happening to be very frank unless i am on leave that is when this whole email process happens but otherwise i am the one who takes care of everything basically our uh, radiology machine then coming to one more thing is if you are only interested in you know having a very lucrative business you can open your own radiology center also because these days i believe uh, you know our own um, fraternity is trying to you know uh, say uh, there is something called as a radiation safety officer which every hospital has so basically we are trying to pressurize uh, the council that if there is a cbct machine would kindly appoint a md mds in oral medicine radiology as a radiation safety officer so you will never know in future you might get appointed as a radiation safety officer also if that particular uh, thing comes up ki if there is a cbct machine you need to have a mds oral medicine and radiology as a radiation safety officer because we will know these things better okay so basically it's about you know this particular yeah, last but not the least our oral surgery colleagues too are in a position to take care of most of the things which we know but the but the difference between them and us is they won't be able to give the time and the care what we are giving because this whole process of treatments will require a lot of follow ups which this is coming from my own oral surgery uh, colleague in calcutta who feels that you know he may not be able to take care of the patient after the next after one appointment so he is kind enough to refer those patients to me though he himself is in a position to identify it but he says i won't be able to give justice to this uh, patient because say if a patient comes with dysplasia okay dysplasia is a stage between the cancer and the uh, it's just a uh, one stage away from cancer which can be very much treatable if you identify it early stage and you can re- reverse it in a matter of 6 to 8 months so the patient has to be on continuous follow up for 8 months which my colleague feels he won't be able to do it because he has other important things to do so if you can can try to you know explain this thing to your own colleagues see the basically the whole point is you have to work as a team because end of the day you should be able to convince your skill to somebody so that's what i managed to do even to the bds full timers who work and also my other colleagues who are in other specialties like see basically when we are in college we are always in loggerheads with our other specialty people mainly it's the oral surgeons but luckily <laughs> those things didn't happen to me in calcutta they were there we all work as a team and i just don't get referrals from the dentists themselves per se i have patients from geriatric md geriatric md ent as well as md neurology and sometimes even from any other the general medicine uh, uh, doctors as well i would like to add one more point here which i kind of regretted when i was doing my masters okay so since we have the knowledge of radiology it is we who are mostly doing the implant planning and all yes. okay so i think the people who are pursuing mds in oral medicine can also look into the implant implantology also while they are doing mds in oral medicine instead of you know just thinking of you know let's see after mds we'll see however is the scope because i myself i am thinking right now because uh it's not easy you know to be getting a course alternative course in the middle of your career in the middle of your work so if the person who is pursuing oral medicine and radiology has a radiology knowledge which most which you can utilize it in implantology so it's my sincere advice ki don't be under the impression that if you're doing mds in oral medicine you can't do a parallel implantology what your other colleagues will be doing from the department of prosthodontics oral surgery periodontology so please get into this also because the uh, radiology knowledge you have with your other colleagues will not have so that there you already have that plus point with you so one this is one thing which i couldn't do if anybody else is planning to do it i would want them to see it in this direction also because now i have heard in many institutions in andhra tamil nadu they are even pushing oral medicine uh, pgs also to implantology 
Yes, I think that's uh, very beautifully you put it. You know, in a very nice manner, where uh, how networking helps, how it is important that absolutely you have to showcase your skills. Once you're out of college, nobody knows you as a uh, you know as a specialist. Absolutely, you have to put forward everything on a plate, and then you will have to serve it so that people get to know that what your speciality is all about. What are your skills? And unless and until somebody does uh, does that, they will not be able to get patients. So I think that's a, a take home message that you guys can take from this you know session. Mm -hmm. Just see the importance of network building. and then coming out going in the market talking to people telling them what your skills are and what can you offer you know uh, to the patients so i think that's very very important and uh, very beautifully you also uh, you know uh, answered our next very question which i was about to ask you that what are the various career options that one can go for when they are doing mbs in omr and she's put it so correctly that you know not just as an academician but you can work as a specialist mm -hmm. you can work as a radiologist you can work in dental clinics uh, as you know you can have your own clinic as a general dentistry you can practice yeah. that's your specialty so there are so many avenues that are there and of course i think one can also go in research if they want to go of course i was about to come to that only like you know you've had uh, you would have studied evidence based medicine you know what is uh, you know you you are you, ultimately if you are interested see i managed to publish some five or six articles in a matter of one year i was totally into it when i was working as a senior lecturer in virajpet so i was even open to that you know if i get an option basically i was open to anything i was even open to you know if i don't get what i'm looking for i as will become a content writer or i just jump into clinical research if that but that particular city i don't think so the clinical research is upcoming in that particular city i think in that particular city it since it is too populated i the way i am placed right now is better to be very frank yeah right so i think that's mm -hmm. again one of the avenues that open up uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the om omdr specialist that you can work as a clinical researchers also and i think you uh once you work in the clinical research area you're always uh, put on a higher you know at a higher level at a higher position basically as compared to a bds fresh mm -hmm. as you doing mds try to publish some articles also so that your avenues will widen up yeah right exactly so see is is just not limited to academician as we always feel that so uh, dr achita we would like to know that what are the latest technologies you know advancements happening in this field of oral medicine and radiology that right now if an mds if a student is pursuing mds they should focus on the latest technologies so that once they come out uh, from the college they are well versed with what is happening in the market okay uh, so what happens is um see it all again depends upon which college you are you know pass you are which college you are uh, pursuing this particular thing it all depends upon what infrastructure they have but nevertheless you know nowadays as you know that cbct has become mandatory so i feel frankly speaking even when i graduated also i was not to be very frank i was not too very well versed with cbct See, it is in past five years that CBCT has taken a, uh, you know, made has managed to, you know, make a place in every dental clinic. Ki without CBCT, I don't think so. It's possible because earlier five years back, you know, even there was a cost constraint also. You know, say every dentist would even think of, you know, referring the patient. You know, what if the patient has to spend so much on the scan per se? What will the patient do? once you once you explain him about the cost of the cbct and again the cost of the uh, treatment but right now since we have you know in the major cities we have enough and more uh, centers and you know say for example if a patient if a doctor's requirement is just one tooth so there is a option of getting just a report of that one tooth also which is very very reasonable so any mds should be very well versed with radiology in my opinion okay and one in coming to medicine part yeah uh, the thing is the lesions what is occurring in the mouth definitely will not change it is going to be the same but the treatment options definitely are changing day by day 
so i want the students to be you know where all the time updated you know try to read the latest articles the latest uh, recent developments in particular thing say for example what is the recent edition which has come in the market uh, when it comes to treatment of oral lichen planus even if it is a simple steroid what you giving it to the patient you should know which dose to give when and oral and oral steroids come in a lot of forms oral form application form injection form so you should know which is suitable for your own, your own, your patient so i think you know it has to just go hand in hand and now i've seen people you know for example uh, i think in my opinion which again i couldn't do as a student try giving more uh, importance to occlusion okay there is something called as t scan where there is a process called uh, de occluding procedure where you are treating the tmd patients just by correcting the occlusion maybe you can you know come uh, take help from your perio prosto colleagues i'm sorry prosto colleagues and know more about occlusion i don't think so in the current curriculum we are giving too much importance to that because that comes last when it comes to treating tmds okay then last but not the least when you're treating some something called as you know atypical facial pain now it is called uh, persistent idiopathic facial pain earlier it used to be called as a atypical facial pain so again the theory is every year it keeps changing so to be updated with that it's only about reading because end of the day you can say the oral medicine is all about diagnosis and you are getting paid for your diagnosis just for the knowledge what is there in your mind and for that i think you have to keep reading and that's the only option right and uh, luckily the center where i work uh, we have both the um, soft tissue lasers and hard tissue lasers so i think if parallelly the um, i i luckily got a formal training back in calcutta itself it was not for a longer duration so i am using lasers quite comfortably now because i think it comes as a very handy tool especially when you are doing a, a full time practice in oral medicine it, it is a very handy tool so if the students if they are interested in laser i think they can go in uh, you know try give more importance to laser because it comes very handy even if you are starting your own clinic yes. if you want to do a specialized oral medicine practice i think you know having a laser i know it, it it will be expensive to start off but it is very very handy especially when you're doing a specialized oral medicine practice right i think that's very well said and also mm -hmm. um, just we we were curious to know that during this time like during the pandemic also you might have seen uh, oral manifestations which are you know more uh, prone in in uh, covid positive patients so i think us to first with these kind of oral manifestations also definitely nowadays even the the thing is uh, covid as it is you know we i couldn't see to be very frank i couldn't see any kind of oral manifestations per se because i too have treated a lot of post covid patients who have recovered from covid but now since past 2 3 uh, weeks uh each time i'm doing a report in cbct i ensure that i'm taking a uh, you know history of past covid uh, because uh, nowadays mucor microsis is coming to act uh, coming to play cbct is has become a very important tool here uh, for example uh, you know any if any initial because since it is involving the head and the neck the paranasal region say your facility the where you are working if it has a good cbct machine with a larger fov fov as in it is field of view um, say i have in the center where i work we have a, a medium sized fov where i am able to you know get the images of the maxillary sinus as well okay so there i am trying to see if there are any initial changes in the maxillary sinus so immediately if that is there and the patient had a history of covid i am immediately alerting the patient ki why don't you take a uh, you know ultimately the final diagnosis is going to be the biopsy and followed by the final diagnosis but instead of you know waiting for the disaster to happen the patient can themselves go to the ent maybe uh, try and see what the ent suggests going for your biopsy and be done with it because for any treatment of mucormycosis i think the initial treatment is is the main thing early recognition is the main thing and you know i 
want to tell this also which i which this point i missed earlier like say if you are trying to start your own center uh, in uh, cbct cbct center uh, this is the point i missed previously you can even go and you know if you if you if your facility has a cbct where you can manage to get the images of the paranasal region also which includes your max maxillary sinus nasal complex and the ethmoidal complex you can even you know go to the ent because they them they are seeing this part of the face most of the time so you can just try to tell them ki you know cbct has less exposure compared to ct and it is more readily available patient is more comfortable getting a cbct exposure than getting a ct exposure so i too managed to get lot of reference from the ent for radiology as well because i say ki uh, doctor instead of sending the patient else where you send it here itself yeah. i will give you the images of the maxillary sinus and last but not the least we are you know focusing a lot nowadays on sleep apnea also yes. so again if you have a cbct where you can manage to get the upper uh, respiratory tract nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx that's it you can immediately give the report to the ent regarding the sleep apnea or you can team up with your prostodontist and try treating the sleep apnea yourself okay right. so this point i think i forgot to mention earlier right. that you know you can sell cbct in such a way that it is absolutely safe compared to ct because it has less exposure and during the pandemic yeah it is coming as a tool i'm not saying that it is absolutely indicated because if the infection has extended beyond the paranasal complex definitely cbct will not give you any uh, cbct won't be of any help but if it is well within you know there is a patient who have had covid 6 weeks back has come to you for a treatment you know you can routinely convince the patient to go in for a cbct and just try to examine the maxillary sinus just to rule out so that you are, you can identify uh, because these days the the initial signs will be in the sinus region itself where which can be captured easily in any cbct exactly so uh, very well you know pointed out all the pointers that you should be well versed with cbct you should be well versed with occlusion as you know most mostly oral medicine uh, as of now it is not being taken care of so apart from that like she said oral manifestations that are seen due, during the pandemic uh, sleep apnea is one uh, one of the cases a few of the cases that she is seeing on frequent you know basis so these are few of the cases that or you know ailments that you should work on and you should be well versed with uh one more thing what i came across in our last pandemic when we were on a complete lockdown was because we weren't allowed into the dental clinic as such we were just given you know uh, weekly a per doctor was given only 2 hours a week so obviously we had to just go weekly twice so rest of the time i was at home but since i had some connections with the private dentist also and with some patients who i know personally i could kind of do a telemedicine session also to a lot of patients so again because i have i am a specialist in oral medicine i could manage to do a telemedicine session also maybe it was not in a major number but i could manage to do to around 10 or 12 patients it even involved one case involved a, a suspected oral malignancy also Okay. which was sent for biopsy immediately so because i have seen in the last pandemic because of the unavailability of the doctors patient has lost around 5 months of time yes. precious time was lost so that was a little unfortunate thing what happened to a few few patients but yeah whoever could take the facility advantage of the facility have taken yes right so as she correctly mm-hmm. said during this pandemic also you can also you know work as a telemedicine through telemedicine basically and provide the basic consultation that is needed for your patient so that's also one thing that uh, a dentist can you know a, an oral medicine and radiology specialist can basically work on so Absolutely. well said and uh, uh, we would also like to know that in the bds when they when the bds graduates they start their third year and fourth year they start getting to know this oral medicine and radiology as a subject so what would you recommend to undergraduate students that 
what are the things that they should concentrate on as oral medicine in the oral medicine and radiology and not just mug up you know the diseases but then understand the concept so what are the basic concepts that they, they should focus on uh, first and foremost most of the students won't be aware of the oral medicine faculty at the first place and the the minute they are posted in third year the only thing they see the pg is doing is just sending off the patients in the medicine section and just you know going on taking the uh, x rays in the radiology section okay but what they don't do the undergraduates mostly don't do is they don't they don't give importance to history taking this is what i've seen in most of the uh, students and second thing what they what they don't do is they don't examine the oral cavity properly they would have just examined the tooth that's it they wouldn't have they would have failed to examine the tongue the floor of the mouth the palate and uh, the buccal mucosa of course they wouldn't have taken the history properly because half of your uh i think 80% of your diagnosis is in the history itself rest 20 is what you see that's all but 80% lies in the history itself to 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 all the undergraduates i would like to say that kindly take the history kindly take the history and one more thing what i have seen in the clinical setup where i work is most of the bds graduates they struggle to take a basic iopr they would be very good in doing a root canal they would be very good in doing a restoration but ultimately you can't do a good restoration or a good rct without a good x ray right probably they wouldn't have taken an x ray when they were they'll be in under graduation because we all know that we on the exam day we make the technician take it for us so for which we would have been friends with the technician from the third year itself true but i have seen my own uh, in my own center i have seen my uh, doctors my colleagues who are who worked with me struggling to take one x ray so there was a time where i would give them training as to take how to take a good x ray so that that will aid them in you know doing a good rct because a good because you can't Though our facility has a CBCT, you can't simply keep exposing the patient on and on to the CBCT. It is not, uh, it is not ethical. Also, I can say, because for one uh, rate, uh, for for one RCT, I don't, and also the multiple exposures. Right. You take one X-ray, you take one, you um, you shoot one X-ray, it wouldn't have come properly. You do multiple exposures. so this is not about just exposing the patient you are exposing yourself you are even exposing the uh, assistant also who is assisting you when this whole thing is happening because when i am around uh, i seen them you know the minute i go they i seen them you know taking the lead apron making the patient wear and all because i keep stressing on those things but that can't happen most of the time especially in this covid time where we are where you have already covered yourself so it should be only one exposure that's all yeah. and these days even if you have taken a digital x ray there is a direct current machine which has a comparative less exposure compared to the ac machines what we used to have earlier so i don't think so you know the undergraduates at least have to learn how to take a good iopr which is a bread and butter of dentistry right uh, dr achita very well said so if you are who pursuing bds make sure that you are well versed with taking at least the iopr which is a very very basic uh, you know radiograph that you have to take if you are doing simple uh, rct you know single tooth rct also if you are doing it you will have to take uh, an iopr so that's very very uh, important that you take make sure that you do it in one time only you you do you take a correct iopr and apart from that Uh, as she said make sure that you are also not just concentrating on the complaint of patient but you are taking a complete history of the patient and you are well versed with examining the oral entire oral cavity and not just the teeth you can always refer these kind of patients if you find any kind of complications you can always refer to a specialist then we would like to know your last thoughts on the current scope and opportunities that you see in oral medicine and radiology okay so the thing is again compared to your clinical subjects the non clinical this particular uh, the pgs who are passing out as oral medicine and radiology is still less compared to the other clinical specialities so don't just see this subject as a non clinical subject 
you know try to explore in and out of oral medicine because oral medicine is definitely a very beautiful subject i can say because when i when my patients give me positive replies on a positive uh, uh, feedback on a daily basis i will not regret that i did a mds in oral medicine and the, again uh, every subject has its pros and cons again coming to the cons again you won't be earning as much as what your other um, counterparts will be doing but if you're again running a very big radiology center it is definitely a lucrative business if you can invest and if you can channelize not just the dentists even the ent and the people who are treating sleep apnea i'm pretty sure that you can have a lucrative business even with the radiology center okay and coming to another positive point i last year even when i was sitting at home i could do a lot of consultations even from my home that could only happen because i i did a mds in oral medicine and one more thing is i could be in touch with the most of the doctors uh, who were who are working in the same hospital as that of me i could go and approach them and i could get their reference from them also because of this particular subject it would have wouldn't have happened if, it, if without this mostly it is you know they know only about oral surgeons right but you can ensure that they know about oral medicine as well and again uh, you know again if Uh, you you have to create an opportunity you have to create it yourself because nobody is there to already uh, there are no existing opportunities for you like there is an ex- already an existing opportunity for the orthodontist there is an existing opportunity for the endodontist the pedodontist the periodontist for the other oral surgeons also but i think somewhere in this we are not there so somehow it is you has to create the self opportunity and last but not the least i even do general dentistry so what i my focus right now is you know uh, the indian government has to come up with something called as a you know third party funding or something because most of the time the patient will be interested in getting a treatment because we are in india where we do the cheapest dentistry in the whole world i can say so if anybody who is a very enthusiastic dentist who can you know put this issue forward and you know establish a third party funding in our field i can tell you that none of us will be you know going out of practice any time right it's just that that barrier is there ki patients are ready to get the treatment done but they will not get it done at once or probably they start living with the problem that's what i think in our field so once that barrier is gone i think i don't think so there should be any problem right and last but not the least don't restrict yourself to anything because when i moved to calcutta i had a very open mind i was ready to take up anything even if it was a job in uh, nothing to related to dentistry also i was ready to do that also i think we should show our presence everywhere it shouldn't be like you know oh you have become a dentist start a clinic right. or be an academician let's come out of that bubble and be ready for everything exactly so these are my last i think that's you we can even take a cue from dr shirin also uh, yes. like you know we have to at least come out of this bubble exactly i think it's very very important to uh, you know come out of your comfort zone that's very important as you said like mm-hmm. in the initial when we started the conversation it's very important to come out of that comfort zone and see what is all around you and how can you amalgamate that with your skill and with your you know mm-hmm. i think that's very very important uh, so that's the take home message so many t- messages that you know i think she's put it very nicely very beautifully for you all so all you dental graduates bds mds make sure that you take these notes uh, you take these points and start implementing from day 1 uh once you listen to this session and i'm sure that once you're out of the college you will be uh, you know uh, you will be able to have a much lucrative career of course it will take time it is not going to happen overnight as we always say it will take time but you have to be patient you have to be uh, consistent with your efforts so thank you so much dr rachita for coming on our platform today and sharing so many you know thoughts and so many insights in this field of oral medicine and radiology which i think uh, there is you know you you actually 
uh, busted the myth that we have all around this particular field that OMR means you have to work as an academician and that's it. But you have come up with so many things. You come, you came out of your comfort zone. You did so many things, and you're doing so many things. So thank you very much for sharing all those things with our audience today and making them well versed with this particular field of oral medicine radiology. Thank you once again. Thank you so much once again for the opportunity. So all you audience, uh, here, thank you so much for patiently listening to us. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye and good luck. And before that, please hit the subscribe button because it is it really is a lot of hard work for us to make sure that we get industry people for you guys so that you get to know what is actually happening in the industry. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel, you like and share this in your network because this might help out with people who are doing MDS or who want to do MDS in OMDR. So thank you everyone once again. I will see you in the next video. Until bye and good luck.